and welcome to another episode of Exact Tax, brought to you by Actionable Insights. My name is Seth Harrison, and today I just finished my Xactimate Train the Trainer class on my way to becoming an XCT. And as a part of our training course, I had to shoot or present a 15-minute presentation on calculations and variables. And something I drilled down on that I hadn't known a lot about previously uh, was subroom variables, reference area variables, and reference block variables. So I thought, why not shoot an exact tech on my presentation from today? So as you can see here, I have a couple rooms labeled, and I'm gonna click this subroom variable so you can see the line items down here. Now the first one is PN2, P2, paint the surface area, two coats, and the calc is WC0 plus C1. What exactly does this mean? If there is a number after a variable, F2, WC0, that is denoting a room or a subroom. So the main room, the parent room, will always be a zero. So the WC0 here is saying walls and ceilings of my original room subroom variables, plus I want to paint the ceilings of my subroom one, which is subroom one. I've named it accordingly. And you can see this really based on what's in the parentheses here. That one. So obviously I've named it subroom one, but it's the parentheses after there that's, that's telling me that this is uh, walls and ceilings of the original subroom variables room and plus the ceiling of the subroom one. Then I put this line item here, PNTP uh, 3WC. So a three. If there's a number in front of a variable in general, that's a multiple. Now, actionable insights, best formatting practices, you would never see this. You would see something like WC times three, or three times WC. But you can put the number in front, and that is inherently multiplying uh, walls and ceilings times three. I put three CW, and now it doesn't want to play nice. Boom. So lastly, just to show the differentiation in that number after the subroom variable, I have another line item here to show uh, WC0 plus C2. So I'm painting the walls and ceilings of the main room the subroom variables, and also the ceiling of the second subroom, subroom two, as you can see here in the parentheses two. Now note, WC0 between these two line items here, six and 19, are the same. That's gonna be the same calculation and variable based on the sketch, it's the same exact room. But I've added C1 and C2 in a different one. And so you can tell, obviously, subroom one is significantly smaller than subroom two, and that lines up as the quantity for the first one, is smaller than the one that is painting the ceiling of uh, the subroom two. Now let's jump down here real quick to reference area, uh, reference area variables. You can see here I have a 12 by 12 room with a little area, uh, re a reference area here that I've placed. If you are trying to install carpet, for example, in everywhere but this F, uh, reference area, more often than not, you're gonna see these reference areas by the entrance where it's denoting, hey, there's a tile entrance and the rest is wood floor or carpet or something like that. And you wanna redo, redo uh, re remove and replace all the floor except in that, that area, that reference area, because it's different. So you would do right here. Oh, I moved it. Interesting, now that I moved it, my, my calculation went away. So I'm actually gonna delete this line item and redo this line item. FCCAV, I'm gonna drop it in. When I drop it in, place to click. You'll see my algorithmic math shows up. It automatically puts the remove and replace. Algorithmic math, meaning the line item is purple. I'm gonna delete my remove. Now currently, it is uh, replacing all of the flooring in this room. But I want to um, subtract the area that I put in. And to do that, I'm gonna do minus SFA1. And you can see my quantity change there because it's saying the square footage of area one, don't count that. So replace the floor, but not that square footage area. So SF and then A and whichever the block is, A2, A3, A4. That will help with denote there. Now, reference block variables are the most interesting to me thus far. So you can see right here, I have nothing in this room because I wanted to do it live in this video. So I'm gonna bring up my paint line item, PNT P2. And I'm going to select it and I'm going to drop it on the block. Notice the quantity, I can't show you with my, <laughs> my cursor, but I'm gonna drop it in here. Check out the variable that, that's generated. So we talked about areas, it's SFA1, but for blocks here, it's block2.sf. And that's not B1, as you can notice, this is the first block, B1, it's named block2. So it's telling me block2.sf. Now, if you look at the calculations on this, it's about three by four, which means three times four is about 12. 
So when I dropped that line item onto the block, the only place that it was applied to was this surface area on the top of the block. Now, if we go into 3D, I'm going to show you it's just this top area right here. But these sides are not included when I drop the line item in. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put a line item on a block that applies to not only the top of the block, but all of the sides. When we look at the variables, these are all the variables right here that exist for uh, a block. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the actual menu so you can see it in more detail. Volume, volume, count, area of flooring material removed, perimeter, long wall length area. There's no like easy walls option. And in fact, if you change that line item, the calc down here to anything related to walls and ceilings, it's going to then apply it to the room at large, not the block. So my hack for this that I figured out is I'm gonna take my perimeter of my entire place and I know on my properties that my height of this block is three. So in order to paint all the sides of this block, I'm going to add here, not only do I want my block two SF, and that's the top, but I'm gonna add three. So that's my height, three times block uh, two dot LF. I'm gonna close my parentheses out using my PEMDAS. And as you can see, when I press enter, boom, it's now added all the sides of that 3D block. So subrooms, variables, uh, reference area, variables, reference block variables. Uh, for those that like using subrooms in your estimates, this will be helpful in, in learning how do I denote exactly what's going on with my variables? Uh, what's the difference between this WC0 and C1 or 3WC and then SFA1 and then block2.SF? So each one has these unique characteristics that uh, it's excellent to point out in a video like this for mastery purposes. This has been another exact tag. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.